Hey guys, Dan Bick with MySurvivalSpot.com. Um, back in the garage again today, about to head to work. Um, but I wanted to, to share with you some, some new stuff I got, some new outdoor gear. Um, I've been a cat fisherman my whole life. I grew up cat fishing, uh, everything from hogging to bank lines to trot lines to, you know, hook and line. But I have always caught catfish. That's always what my dad that's what his dad taught him, and that's what he taught me, and on and on and on throughout the years. Um, but catfish was always my family. That's what we fished for. I moved down to the south a few years ago and picked up bass fishing, okay? Um, and largemouth bass is, is what we primarily go for around here. Some crappie and, and brim too, bluegill, uh, sunfish, and shell cracker, and things like that. But I and I knew that uh, bass fishing was way more expensive than cat fishing. I didn't know how much more until recently, but um, I'm going to Korea soon. Uh, back in 1973, I think it was, Korea uh, imported largemouth bass and bluegill from Louisiana. And just like any other invasive species, uh, they have taken over Korean waters. So I'm gearing up to go bass fishing and bluegill fishing in Korea when I get there the here in a few months. Quite a bit of money on, on some fishing gear. Uh, thought I'd show it to you all. I know that there's probably some longtime bass fishermen out there uh, that can look at this tackle box and tell me what I'm missing, uh, tell me what I may want to take with me. Maybe there's even some guys that have been to Korea that are fishermen that can even clue me in on a little bit of stuff. So I'm showing off my gear a little bit, but for the purpose of getting some advice when I go to Korea. So if any of you guys are longtime bass fishermen, or even better if you're a longtime bass fisherman and you've been stationed in Korea, uh, if you see this video, shoot some ideas my way so that I can get my gear set up before I get there, and I sure appreciate that. But here's my tackle box. All right, so here's my tackle box. It's a Plano 732. It's a monster of a thing. Uh, it's larger than any toolbox I own. But I've still got some of my catfishing stuff in here, so you'll you'll still see some of that. But I got a few yo-yos here, and I got a trout line over here. There's a stringer on this side. But I know that when I get there, I can get a fishing pole. But just in case, I wanted to take some with me. Um, there's two ultralights here for brim, and I've got two medium action here for bass, and they're both telescopic poles. On these ultralights, I was catching three pound bass without any issues at all, and these are on an ultralight. I've caught, uh, when my dad came down a few weeks ago, uh, I caught six roughly two pound bass on this pole and one three pound bass on this pole, and it had zero issues, even with these little Zebco 11 uh, reels, the Platinum Zebco series. So there's the, the ultralights. The medium action, uh, I have not even used yet. I just got these in the other day, but I wanted to kind of carry a few of these, uh, you know, some of this stuff with me over there. I just got a nice uh, Berkeley cherry wood rod with a, with a Mitchell uh, 300EX reel also, uh, which, you know, was about 100 bucks. But according to the guy I talked to, it was kind of a value point where you could spend a whole lot more money for a slightly better rod and reel. Um, or a little bit less money for a whole lot worse. So that's what I chose. I spent about a hundred bucks, but I'm not even going to be able to take that combo with me uh, because it doesn't break down. So this is the, these are the rods and reels I'm carrying over there. Um, there's needle nose, Swiss Army knife, lighter. I got a fillet knife in here, some bank line, roll the bank line, and just some uh, crappie bait that I had left over from a. A different project. I just kind of threw that in here. I tried to fit every piece of fishing gear I've got in this tackle box. So it's got three different drawers. The first drawer I've got set up with the basics. I got all my different sinkers in here organized by weight, different floats, hooks, and all of my lines. So hook, line, and sinker is all uh, in this top box here. Nothing nothing out, out of the ordinary in there. The second box is where I keep the soft baits. I've got some natural colored worms here. Uh, that's a culprit 10 inch moccasin. 
color. I've got some red shad, some grape shad, um, some white, and some black worms in 10 and 7 and a half inch. And then I've got some monster 5 out hooks here. And some 3 out over here with a lot smaller shank. And bullet sinkers for a Texas rig. This is one of my favorite boxes here. This is more like the brim box or the crappie box. Um, wide assortment of hooks. They're not even organized, they're just kind of thrown in there. They were a bulk pack that I just kind of tossed in there. Jig heads, beetle spins, which I like a lot. I've caught a lot of fish on beetle spins. I've got probably 20 of them in here. A uh, bunch of soft baits for crappie brim. Um, and then I've got a few spinner baits over here. A couple of crank baits, a couple of spinner baits. They're just kind of piled on top of one another in there. In this side compartment here, I've got my crankbaits. And I've got some deep divers, some, some shallow divers, but there's my crankbaits. That's the smaller variety on this in this package here. There's two of them there actually. There's a probably my most expensive lure. That's a just a kind of a topwater um, with a hinge in it. That's a Rapala there. Another hula popper, topwater and a small crankbait. Probably a medium dive with that bill on it there. This is uh, there's a top water there, Rapala, another crankbait, and another Rapala there. Got some more crankbaits, another top water, crankbait, crankbait, crankbait. So I've got a wide assortment of, of stuff for when I get over there. Um, I just kind of bought a little bit of everything over the past couple of years. Um, I still am not anywhere near the bass fisherman than I am a cat fisherman. Um, and maybe they've got catfish there too. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they do or not. But but if there's something that, that you are dying to tell me about, about bass fishing, uh, send me a link or, a, or an email or a message and tell me uh, if you've been to Korea, that's even better. If not, then tell me what you use and I'll pick up a package of them before I go there and I'll try them out. I don't care. Um, I got nothing but time when I go there. I'm not going to be around my family and I need something to keep me out of trouble. So I'm probably going to start fishing a whole lot more when I get there. But if you could do that for me, guys, I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, I'm Dan Bickett with MySurvivalSpot.com. I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot.